morning guys welcome back to the vlog today is a sunday we're looking a little disheveled this morning we went to a party last night like a family party so it was like a christmas in july slash like an auntie's birthday. surprise birthday you weren't there for like that long you know by the time you get home you're like oh gosh it's like we well were just like really tired so we got up this morning i still got ready this morning we have our coffee we haven't had any breakfast yet this morning i don't know if we're gonna bother or whether we're just gonna skip it today i think maybe fasting is probably good especially after like we didn't eat anything too weird but we definitely there wasn't many vegetables and there wasn't many salads it's like i feel really just gross this morning like i woke up with a headache i probably Drank. You had a headache last night. Not that I drank too well. much, but yeah, like I went to sleep with the headaches. Not like I've got a hangover, but I like had a couple glasses of wine. I'm just feeling a bit gross. It's a bit probably tired. good to start off with a fast. Yeah, so we're gonna fast, give the old digestive system a bit of a break, and then I don't really know what's the plan for today. Well, originally we were gonna make bone broth and, and dog treats. And dog treats. So that was like the plan for this vlog. But yes, but we had to would have had to start the bone broth yesterday today because you need it you should mm. give it to at least 24 hours like that. you could do it for less but i feel like it's probably going to be better the longer that you leave yeah. it yeah so. so we should have really started yesterday there was a lot of running around yesterday mm. we, did, we ticked off a lot of things and we went to a brunch and like i don't know i just felt like we were running around everywhere yesterday so mm. today is like whatever plans we had for the vlog have kind of fallen through so then we're just going to be winging it today and like i think i'm just going to be chilling out to be honest it's been a rainy weekend it's been raining since it's Friday. Still household chores to do and the fact that we still have to do shopping is quite daunting. Skipped out on the markets as well yesterday because it's it was, like it muddy rain. and yeah. rainy and just depressing. So we're just going to do like a shop today. Hopefully we can knock that out really quickly. Do you want to show them what happened? The herbs got decimated by um, a possum. I'm sad heartbroken so this is the current status of our basil that has been as you can see decimated this guy also got a little bit chomped and our second basil got chomped apparently possums don't like to have mint though because he's doing absolutely fine and also our parsley is still kicking it so there you go I don't know what that means for the future of our herb garden because I'm thinking I'm they've found it. Go, I think I'm gonna have to go to like uh, Bunnings and find like a cloche or like some kind of like a mesh net to put over the top maybe just put it over the top at night so that like the possums can't get in because mm. like he's the possums attacked all three of our basil bushes and the oregano just like the basil is just completely decimated i was getting excited to make more basil butter yes this puts a halt on basil butter for now we always mention basil butter but if you are here and you haven't watched the vlog where nick made basil butter that's what we're constantly referring to so if anybody who's new here i'll put like a little card for the time like, when we made basil butter so it'll probably pop up like over here Better somewhere effect. today i think we're just going to chill out i feel like watching a movie or something it's like that rainy kind of cozy weather so once we like get out and get all our stuff done i just want to like stay at home i'll probably make a fair few teas today <laughs> might make a mug cake we haven't done that actually on the vlog yeah we'll Nick's show mug, mug cake. cakes but yeah see what we get up to today we'll, and... make, we'll make a mug cake we can show you how to make a mug cake we have a microwave here but that was an existing microwave. That yeah, was here. we've never actually bought our own microwave because we never microwave anything. But then when we moved in here, there was already a microwave like with the place. So we've been taking full advantage of that and making mug cakes. See, we call it a mug cake because well, it's actually made in a bowl. But the idea is that you could make a cake in a mug in a microwave. Um, I, mean, I, I think most people incredibly dangerous. I think most people know what a mug cake is. Well, some people probably don't. You don't <laughs> know what some people's lives have led them. In our case, you know, we've been led towards the <laughs> glorious and devastating discovery of the mug cake. <laughs> it is both a blessing and a curse. Yeah, that's the one bad thing. Like once you figure out how to once make mug you cake, you know, you know. And then every time you're bored, you're like, hmm, mug cake. <laughs> kind of takes away the whole like. I could really go for, I don't know, like a small cake or a carrot cake or like a coffee shop cake or something like that. You're like, and you like, make mug cake. I can make one here. <laughs> Which I mean, actually it's probably a good thing because it's a little bit healthier than buying cake out. And like, we do like a paleo mug cake, but anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll show you it guys later. Like okay, we will talk to you guys a little bit later. Morning plans is probably gonna be food shopping. Okay, 
Okay, so we got back from doing our food shop a little bit earlier. We took Billy for a walk because there's been like a very small break in the rain. We're actually just on to cooking some lunch slash brunch. So whenever we do fasting, I've probably mentioned this like a thousand times, but whenever we do fasting, we generally break it like around, I'd say like 11-ish. We do more like a brunch that takes the place of lunch and breakfast. But today we are actually doing a satay chicken. So at our party last night, we brought like a big batch of satay chicken to share and we have heaps left over. Not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's like, I don't care. We're also going to be cooking up some white rice to have with that just because I feel like it doesn't really make sense to have like satay chicken without like some white rice. So much for saying we were like going to be like eating super well today. Well, it's also that we've just got a lot of leftovers. So, I mean, like, we don't want to waste anything. So we're going to eat that. And it's really good. It's actually a recipe out of Pete Evans book. Actually, I have the book like right here. This is probably our favorite Pete Evans book, the family food one. It's still very paleo-esque. I think everything in here is, is paleo. I feel like that's one of his first books, but it's not too strict like some of his subsequent cookbooks are more like keto friendly recipes. So this one, I feel like there's like a little bit more whole food carbs and things like that, but yeah. That's just a little random book recommendation if you're looking for some recipe inspo. We did alter it a bit and we reduced the salt. We found the original recipe was a little bit too salty for our mm, taste. Actually, that's one thing. I'm just gonna like lean down here. So we trialed the recipe the night before. We, we trialed the recipe and it was so salty that we had to, like it was inedible level of salty where we had to wash off the chicken in a colander before we could eat it. But so that might have been a misunderstanding of how we cooked it. <laughs> I'm gonna chop up some veggies to have with our lunch. Nick's gonna be cooking up the chicken and we're gonna break this fast. So our brunch is ready. We have like this mountain of zucchini and broccolini. We've got some white rice and our satay chicken, which is looking super good. Coriander as well. So I am, we finished lunch by the way. I am just gonna watch something on Netflix because I just feel like chilling out cold. Actually, it's not that cold today, but it is like overcast, drizzly, rainy. I think I'll get on to like house chores and stuff later this afternoon, but I just wanna like watch something if the internet will work i'm just trying to get netflix started lately i think i've mentioned before we've been like re-watching the vampire diaries other than that i don't have like any shows on the go at the moment although there's a few interesting ones that are like new to netflix so i really want to watch the is it called warrior nun which looks good. We love like supernatural themes. So we'll probably get onto that when we finish Vampire Diaries. The other show that I watched the other night is called Unsolved Mysteries, which is like, I think it's like a combination of true crime, paranormal stuff. I'm not really interested in true crime and like crime TV, you know, like Law and Order SVU. So that's not really my jam. However, I do love alien stuff. So there's like one episode, I think it's episode four maybe, that's all about like alien abduction and UFOs, which I really love to do that. It's like good to have a topic that's not too heavy and like just a bit of brain mush to like watch every now and then. Like I love alien podcasts. I love, yeah, like alien docos and TV shows. So that one is really interesting if you're into aliens, but let me know in the comments as well what you guys have been watching lately and like what you've been watching throughout quarantine, depending on where you are. We're not really like in quarantine or anything anymore, but I know a lot of people obviously are, but let me know what you've been binge watching because I always love to like get new series and like, hear what people are loving. I'm gonna find something to watch, but that'll probably take me a solid half hour just to find a movie. We'll see what I land on. So it is a little bit later and you won't believe it, but the sun has actually come out and it's like blue skies outside. I ended up watching I don't actually remember what the movie was called. I think it was called Don't Make a Sound, which was kind of like Bird Box 2.0. So instead of like losing sight, it's like people just have to be very quiet and there's like no talking in this movie. My rating out of 10 would probably be like a four out of 10. It was pretty lame to be honest. Like Bird Box was a lot better than that movie and uh, that's probably saying something. And we're actually gonna take Billy for another walk right now because it's like fully blue skies all of a sudden. I'm gonna make the most of it, get outside. <laughs> Get outside, go for a little walk.
So it actually clouded over again and got like super dark this afternoon and we're about to start cooking some dinner even though it's still like I think quite early for most people. Is it only like five? It's five. It's five but we're gonna make a start on dinner. We like to eat dinner early just Feels better. It feels like more in sync with like the natural rhythms like the Sun is going down It's gonna be dark earlier. So we're gonna eat earlier mm. and then it also like extends your fasting window So if you stop eating at like 630 you get like a bigger overnight fast yeah. Which is like good for you it as well. It makes it easier to do a longer fast because if you have to fast But you finished eating at like 8. Yeah, you know, you and then you get to over. like 12 You're like oh everyone else is eating lunch. It makes it a lot harder. Yeah, not that we're even necessarily like planning to fast tomorrow, but I think it's just a good habit to be in like eating dinner earlier if you can obviously because like during the week it's not always possible to clock out at five and have dinner ready but yeah anyway we're gonna start making some dinner so tonight I will flip the camera so tonight we are actually kind of doing a little bit of a clean out of the fridge so these are just a few things that we had left over that didn't get eaten up throughout the week so we have a medium sort of small sweet potato a lone beetroot and then we actually still have some purple cauliflower left over so I'm going to do that all up in the oven together and then we also bought some wild salmon so we're just gonna be eating salmon again for dinner tonight nothing too crazy yeah I'm gonna get onto that Okay guys, so we have just finished dinner and we are going to make some dessert tonight. So we're going to be making our paleo mug cakes, which yep. we've been super into lately. Probably doing them too often. <laughs> I feel like we're doing this like every other day, which is probably not a good sure. thing. One thing, when you're on paleo, you probably don't want to get like too much into... This is a trap. I think, I think this is, is a trap, trap that people it's, say... And the half of the problem is because we have a microwave. Yeah, I mean like you can automatically get yourself out of this mess by not having a microwave. Um, it's not necessary, you can always heat things up on the stove. But the problem yeah. is that when it becomes too convenient, then you start making mug cakes it every single too day. too easy. Here's one, what's one... going to destroy your life. <laughs> It'll be really yummy, but try, if you can, to keep it like as an occasional thing. Just because I do know that a lot of the people that do paleo, especially that get really into baking, and... you can develop various sensitivities to different kinds of nuts because you're eating them in like huge quantities when you're using them as a flour but that's the thing though it's like you know people are like oh I'll go paleo I'm doing so well and then it's like well you're just replacing everything with a really dense nutty thing, thing. Like a nut. and it's so like, you're just like eating almonds like constantly throughout and the day. Nuts anyway already, we're being yeah. like super Nerdy. downer on this <laughs> this is just a fun thing that you can have occasionally Try to moderate if you can. We haven't even been the best with that lately. Without further ado, we're going to actually show you how to make this epic mug cake. I think you're wanting a vanilla with blueberries. Yeah, so I'm gonna do vanilla blueberry. You're gonna do chocolate. I think I'm gonna do chocolate. I would recommend adding in a little bit of 90% chocolate. This is a little bit of a choc chip or like a, you know, like a square in there to kind of make it a little bit mm. extra if you want. The only real sugar in this is gonna be like a teaspoon of honey. You yeah. can make that less. I wouldn't recommend making it anymore. No, I wouldn't. But you could swap yeah. this for like stevia or whatever. Yeah, it into. does work with stevia. Yeah. I suppose you might need a little bit more, but it has that stevia taste, I guess. But anyway, so you can obviously like do whatever flavor you want. You can like try it with different her herbs, <laughs> spices. You could do like cinnamon, I, nutmeg, like all lots that kind of, of stuff. Combos you could do. Yeah. But today we're gonna keep it simple. I really yeah. like blueberry just because it's like got fun little nuggets and treats inside your cake. Yep, chocolate's always been a favorite of mine. So we're gonna get started. And you can obviously use a mug, but we're using two bowls just because our mugs are like a little bit small. So I usually start off with about a spoonful or so of coconut oil. The more you use, the uh, more moist it will be. I know people hate that word, but it's true. You can use as little as you want. There's no real measurement around this. Just bear in mind the less you use, the more dry it will be. A teaspoon of honey, mind the fingers. Okay, so these are now going to go into the microwave for probably about 30 seconds or so. What we want to do is we want to get all of this stuff in here nice and liquid so that it's a lot easier to mix in with all the other ingredients. Okay, so that's pretty much all melted down. So now I add in two tablespoons of almond meal. 
and also two tablespoons of desiccated coconut. If you want a denser cake, this will make a lighter cake. If you want a denser cake, replace one tablespoon of coconut with one tablespoon of almond flour, almond meal. So that would be three tablespoons of almond meal and one tablespoon of coconut. If you're doing a chocolate cake, add in one tablespoon of cacao. Put in some vanilla, if you're doing vanilla, and one egg in each. Just give it a good mix. Don't forget to make a mess. Just get the mess all up in there. Now I'm just gonna add in a square of chocolate into the blueberry one, just because it's nice. Damn. It's nice and surprised down the bottom. Usually Amy's not watching me make this. And I'm gonna make mine a chocolate chocolate chip. So I'm just gonna break it up roughly and then just throw them in on the top. Throw in a handful of blueberries, just as much as you want really. And that's what it looks like before it goes in the microwave. These will now go in the microwave. Put them in one at a time for about two minutes at a time. So we're going in for two minutes. Okay, so we are going to watch an episode of, well actually we're finishing an episode of Vampire Diaries. Got our mug cakes. And I think we'll go ahead and sign off the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.